This is a small slide. You can look at it later. But essentially, it goes through what do you do when somebody has low oxygen? You get the history first. Then you find out is this an acute problem or a chronic problem, or is it an acute or chronic problem? A lot of times, patients with ARDS might actually have other problems existing from before. And when they have other problems existing from before, it's possible that their disease gets worse. So you might have somebody with COPD who ends up with ARDS, and then you get the lungs to not have a baseline that is good. So they very quickly go into extreme lung damage. Once you have diagnosed the cause, is it an emergency cause or is it something chronic? Then you figure out what are my goals of care. You can decide to adjust the oxygen level you're giving them. You can check your resources. Can I keep the patient in your own city, or do you have to transport this patient, or do I need to safely transport by initiating ventilation either through a non-invasive system with a mask on the face, or invasive ventilation where you can pipe goes in through your throat with an endotracheal tube. There are other concepts listed there which include PEEP, recruitment, and positioning. We'll talk about these later. Now, this is a concept we all need to know. So, assume your height is about five feet. So, this graphic shows you that a five foot eight inch male who's eighty kilos has the same size lungs as a five foot eight inch male who is sixty kilos. What this means is that lung size is determined not by your weight. But by your height and your gender. Likewise, a woman who is six foot two inches, eighty kilos, has a little smaller lung size than a six foot two male who's eighty kilos. And of course, a five foot male with sixty kilos has a smaller lung size than somebody who's five foot eight and sixty kilos. And you need to learn this concept of ideal body weight, and you can calculate that for yourself. Many of us are not at the ideal body weight. I know I am not. So you can have a person who's a five foot. Uh, a five feet male, 50 kg is the ideal body weight. For every inch on top of that, you have to add 2.3 kilos. So a five foot eight inch male ideal body weight is 68.4 kg. This is important because when we ventilate people with ARDS, we want to calculate the tidal volume based not on the actual weight of the patient, but on the ideal body weight. And the ideal body weight will be 68.4, and you want, you want to use a low tidal volume. Of six to eight ml per kg, and we will learn why this is important because there's a mortality benefit. So this graph shows you why we need to actually adjust the volume of the lung based on the height as well as the gender. And this is an important concept you should remember because using a higher than expected tidal volume is causing lung damage and increases the mortality for patients. And it's important that you avoid that. The next concept, which we'll talk about, is the plateau pressure, and we will review this in the graphics in the video also. And the plateau pressure is what you're actually. You know, I'm getting a message that audio is not audible. Is that correct, Shravani? Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Testing. Hello. Yes, Dr. Hanath, I can hear you. Okay, I'm getting messages from Dr. Swapnil that audio is gone, but no, okay, no, no, no. let me continue. Yes, yeah. So, okay, perfect. Okay, so so what we notice with uh, plateau pressure is so when you're having a situation where a patient has oxygen going in with air mixed into the lung, the alveolar sac enlarges. And when the alveolar sac enlarges, you're having a pressure that is applied. And when the pressure comes up in the actual air passage, alveolus on in distending. So as it distends, you have and the pressure. You are going to be a backward slide, and that is called that pressure. Flat lung is feeling. So let's remember. Um, uh, Dr. Harna, please turn off your video, Some please. Of audio all alone. All of you have had, had issues. Yeah, I think I was injured. Yeah. So Hi. when you're having a situation where you're having uh, the lung injured, when your lung is injured, you're having a significant amount of pressure inside the lung. And what you need to do with the ventilator is put something called an inspiratory hold. And what an inspiratory hold is, your as soon as you press the inspiratory hold, 
the air is not moving the air has been sent into the lung and your entire alveolus is enlarged and that pressure that you measure is what is called the plateau pressure and this is an extremely important one and when we know that this pressure is more than 30 you are damaging the lung so you want to do your best to avoid damaging the lung okay, i'm going to try something different here let me grab a different set of uh, headphones and try to talk hold no, on no, one no. second uh, uh, dr hanna uh, your audio is clear without yeah. the video audio is just fine we are here uh, guys okay. my request okay. to people on the chat box is i understand there are some technological issues but some of us might have it from our end also right now ppt and audio is working perfectly fine for most of us so let's allow dr harnath to talk without video uh, he will be losing the flow otherwise so please go on okay perfect so so what we are talking about is so when you have the plateau pressure measurement and you are actually checking it to be about 30 cm of water pressure your really looking at the pressure that lung is actually measuring and this is important because when you go beyond 30 when it goes beyond 30 you are ending up with difficulty with damaging the lung and this is a concept of barotrauma you can also have a concept of volute trauma and you can also have a concept of atelectotrauma where the lung collapses and opens up very rapidly now these might still seem a little high funda at this point but you'll kind of get it at the end of this lecture so remember one more concept permissive hypercapnia we have gone through three things now i've talked to you about the anatomy of the lung talked to you about the alveolar arterial pressure gradient where the oxygen from the air goes into your lung gets to your alveolus gets to your blood vessel and if the oxygen is not getting across you're getting a gradient and normally the gradient is very small maybe 5 to 10 but if the gradient increases then you end up with a significant amount of aa gradient alveolar arterial gradient this can be calculated the formulas for that and you don't have to worry about it right now now you also have a situation where the carbon dioxide goes up because you're not able to blow it out if you're not able to blow it out we actually tolerate it as you know carbon dioxide is an acid normal ph is 7.4 in the blood as your carbon dioxide keeps going up your ph keeps coming down when it comes down to say about 7.25 or so you kind of tolerate it up to that point but then beyond that you cannot tolerate and you have to adjust the breathing how do you get carbon dioxide out this is called concept of ventilation that is tidal volume times your respiratory rate and tidal volume is as we said we calculated it we decided what the number is we said it could be anything between 6 to 8 ml per kilo ideal body weight 5 foot male 50 kilos 5 foot female 45.5 kilos 5 foot male 6 6 ml per kg ideal body weight 6 into 50 300 ml so this 300 ml is what you're going to give but and you want to make them breathe at say 14 times a minute so your minute ventilation which is respiratory rate times your tidal volume multiplied 300 ml into say 20 times a minute that 6 is the minute ventilation however if you to decide that your carbon dioxide is going up to 50 60 like in our patient that we are dealing with here that mechanic with uh, covid ards you end up with a situation where the ph is coming down and once the ph is down you have to figure out how do i get the carbon dioxide blown out you can do one of two things you can increase the rate of the breathing or you can increase the tidal volume however because we know that the lungs are damaged in ards we don't want to increase the tidal volume we can increase the respiratory rate but there is a problem there in my video you will see what this problem is and we will run over this and if i forget to mention this later remind me to ask about the concept of permissive hypercapnia how is it important